Yeah, so as was introduced earlier, this is a, a demonstrator project that came out of an earlier feasibility study called HUGS. Um, and I'll just briefly talk through why we thought we needed something like this, in broad terms what it does. And then at the end, I'll talk about where it's going next. Um, so the kind of data that we're interested in is, um, is anything related to greenhouse gases. So concentrations in the atmosphere. So you're probably all familiar, I hope, with the Mauna Loa Keeling Curve, as it's called, the CO2 record over the last few decades, showing increasing CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere. We use data like this to keep track of global levels of greenhouse gases, which is obviously crucially important for understanding our climate. But we can also use various types of different, um, different types of greenhouse gas data to try and understand national emissions. So in the dash line in this figure, that shows the UK greenhouse gas emissions inventory, so where um, the government or agencies acting on behalf of the government tot up the number of, the amount of econo economic activity that produces greenhouse gas emissions, adds it all together, comes up with a national total. So the number of cars on the, on the road, number of cows out there, et cetera. Um, so that, that's the inventory. But we can also estimate um, greenhouse gas emissions using atmospheric data as well. And so that's what's shown in, this, in the solid line here. Um, so the UK has a greenhouse gas monitoring network called the DEC network. Um, and we, we use this information now routinely every, couple, every year to evaluate the UK's greenhouse gas emissions inventory report that goes to the UN. Uh, we're, I think it's fair to say we're, the UK is pretty pioneering in this respect. We have a lot of information that we combine from the top down, the atmospheric perspective, and the bottom up to really try and understand what we're emitting as well as we can. Um, and then we also use um, a, a variety of different models and data to try and understand natural fluxes and how they're changing. So this is a snapshot of a process model that's trying to predict methane emissions from wetlands, for example, a system that's really sensitive to climate. Um, OK, so that's, there's all this data out there. Why the need for OpenGHG? Well, there was various challenges that we found that we were facing all the time when we were dealing with these different data types and models. Um, the first is that if we just look, for example, at the um, atmospheric monitoring networks, these, each of these different colors here shows some of the global um, networks that are available. It probably makes it look more dense than it really is. Uh, a lot of these are just flash samples that are taken around the world. But there's a whole variety of different networks, and there's no standard for reporting your data, your greenhouse gas data at the moment. On top of this, there are kind of campaign-based data sets which people go out and collect. Um, all of it comes in in different formats. Some of it's archived really well. Some of it's kind of done on a fairly ad hoc basis, all on different calibration scales. So we have this problem that a lot of communities face of standardization, regularization of data, dealing with data gaps, et cetera. Um, the other problem is that the data that we have in the atmosphere is sensitive to different scales. So if, you, if we made a measurement here outside in London, we'd be sensitive to relatively small scales nearby, whereas we have satellites now that are orbiting the Earth measuring CO2 and methane, for example, which can get a much more broad scale picture, but they're sensitive to the atmospheric column. And these different satellites also operate on different scales. So we need to deal with that. And finally, we need complicated models that help us understand these different data sets. So we have different models that predict fluxes coming from the surface, and then we have to have atmospheric models which simulate how those emissions, once they're released into the atmosphere, how are they transported around by the, by the wind. And so that's what's shown here. Um, so that was the motivation behind OpenGHG. So what we wanted to do was build a set of tools, software tools, that allowed us to aggregate data from these various different sources, um, and then produce a set of standards that we would propose for the community for how this data should be treated, what kind of metadata you do, do you need, what kind of structures should this data have. Um, and then we wanted to generate some tools that would allow us to do useful things with that data. Um, so that's, that's what we've um, been working on for the last few years. Um, I'm not going to talk in detail about the architecture here. If you want to um, come and ask me about how we've done it, I'm very happy to bore you with all the, all the fine details. We've, we originally started off this process as a, um, a cloud-based software stack. That's, the idea was that this was going to sit on the, on, the, on the commercial cloud 
we were going to port it to the Jasmine cloud. Um, we've now made it more flexible than that. It's a software tool, set of software tools that can be, can be used on the cloud, but also can be used locally. So if researchers want to download these tools just for the use on their own server, on their own laptop, they can do that. Um, it's not an archive on, on its own. We don't want to, we're not trying to replicate Cedar or anything like that. But what it is is a set of tools to pull data from public archives and process them into a consistent format and then do useful things with them. Um, and then we've, we've got some, um, some researcher-focused tools that then take that data once we've aggregated it and allow the, the users to manipulate that data. So just to show you what it looks like, you've probably seen these things, Jupyter Notebooks, for example. So this could be running on the cloud somewhere, or it could be running on your local machine. There, is, there are tools there where you can use, people with programming skills can start to interrogate the data in, in various different ways. Um, it's all been built on a whole variety of open source um, tools. These are just some of the um, libraries that are imported into our into our, into our library. Um, and we have a GitHub organization where people can come and look at our code, fix bugs, propose new types of um, tool that they want to add to it. And we're trying to grow our user community now. Um, so feel free to, to visit. The other thing that we were keen to do was, once we've got all this data together, we now wanted to show people what we can do with it. Um, one of the um, really cool things that we did was if, during COP26 in Glasgow, a whole bunch of um, groups were coming together from around the world to make greenhouse gas measurements in Glasgow at the time to kind of try and showcase what we can do with atmospheric data. Um, and so we used OpenGHG as the, as the um, live data streaming uh, hub, if you like, to aggregate that data together, standardize it, and then show uh, the attendees at COP what was, what was happening. So we built this, um, this tool which showed some of the data sets that were being made in Glasgow, and we added some, some additional tabs which told people, you know, what, once you've collected this data, what's it used for in the real world? Um, so that was a really nice um, outreach tool. And as I'll say in a minute, we're also now modifying this um, for, for other projects. So that's a very, very brief overview of what we've been doing. Um, and I think um, one of the most exciting things now is, is that this project is still ongoing. We've finished our funding from the Constructing a Digital Environment um, part, but we're now, we've, we've now been able to take this project to the next step, hopefully. Um, the main focus is still to try and grow this user community. What we really want is for the greenhouse gas community to take ownership of this code and contribute to it. And we do have external users now. We're obviously using it in our groups and the teams that have, have helped develop it. But we, we now have some external users, and that's we're keen to grow that. Um, we're using the aggregation and visualization methods in the, in the software to, um, to, uh, to help with the visualization for two different projects. One is an international greenhouse gas monitoring network called A-Gage. So we're just building a dashboard now that will show the um, A-Gage data using OpenGHG. And then also um, the UK DEC network. So I'm going to show a QR code in a minute. Um, if you want to see some UK greenhouse gas data, we have that up on the web now. Um, but perhaps the most, um, the most uh, exciting thing from my point of view is that um, OpenGHG is now going to underpin um, what we're calling a prototype operational greenhouse gas emissions evaluation system for the UK. So this is a new, a new project that has just started uh, called Gemma. It's been led by NPL, but it involves Met Office, Bristol, um, Edinburgh, various other groups. And the aim is to um, take what I showed before about the, the pulling together these various different ways of estimating the UK's greenhouse gas emissions. And instead of having this just be part of a two-year um, reporting cycle that happens you know, when we release our UNF C inventory reports, what we want is to have an information center where people can come to and see maybe one or two months in arrears what have the UK greenhouse gas emissions been you know, in, in near real time? Um, and so that obviously requires all of the types of tool that we have been developing in OpenGHG. It requires data standardization, because we're getting data from a whole different range of networks. It requires um, tools to analyze that data, bring in different models, different statistical methods, and then present the outputs. And so that's what, 
that's the niche that OpenGHG is filling now. And this is, obviously, you're not going to read all this in detail, but this shows the data flow for this new operational system that we're developing. And OpenGHG sits really at the, at the core of this. So we've got two years to kind of prove the concept here um, with all our partners. And then hopefully, if that's successful, then this will become, we're hoping, big picture, you know, it would be nice if this became something analogous to the weather forecast. You know, if we can have a greenhouse gas you know, reporting system that's, that's operating in, uh, in near real time into the future. So that's where we are, um, and that's where we're going. If you want to see an example of uh, the data that we're collecting and, and how it's visualized uh, on OpenGHG, you can use that QR code there. There's also um, a poster at the back, and I've, I've got my laptop that I can show you the dashboard on there as well. So 